Hey, Bart Miller here with Cycling Strong. I wanted to get Dave's opinion on a few things because we get asked about it a lot on the blog. So this is Dave from Plan 7. If you haven't met him before, go watch the other videos. Absolutely amazing coach. He's just coaching me right now. Uh, getting me ready for Leadville. Did it last year. Absolutely had amazing results. So that all being said, people always write in and say, what kind of depth of wheel should I ride? Should I ride carbon? Should I not ride carbon? Should I ride a clincher? Should I ride a tubular? I mean, you, you get the drill. Yes. So why don't you talk just a little bit about wheels to the audience? Okay. So there is a huge variety of great wheel sets out there. Mm -hmm. um, and over the years, the trend obviously has been to go towards carbon wheels. Mm -hmm. There are a number of reasons for that. Um, you know. Initially, people were skeptical of carbon uh, because of braking concerns, mm -hmm. braking in, in wet weather, um, heating up uh, sidewalls. Uh, you know, some of the some of the early setups um, they were very slippery in weather, or if they were grippy, then they were way too grippy, mm -hmm. and and then the heat accumulation was causing. Uh, the clincher track to fail. With tubulars, they weren't having the, those kind of problems because of the way the layup happened. Um, it was a transition all the way through, but for clincher, they're having to create this peak with a little hook on it, right. and, and now they're starting to even move away from having the hook. Right. But regardless, they had this peak going up, and too much heat buildup would cause the epoxy to heat up and evaporate, and then all of the layers of carbon would right. just blow up. Um, and so in just developing better layup processes, um, braking surfaces, as well as, uh, as better brake pads, uh, all of that is behind us. Right. Um, so I have 100% confidence in carbon, carbon wheels whether it's uh, a clincher or a tubular. Okay. They, they have, they've done their homework, they're producing awesome equipment. Mm -hmm. um, Envy is kind of a go-to for both of us. Mm -hmm. um, it's nice because they're a, a more local company to right. where we're at. Um, they do in-house production. Yep. So if you've ever toured their facility, um, you see how they make their equipment. They, they have a milling shop where they make their own molds. Yep. They do the carbon layup there. They do the testing there. Yep. And, and the testing process that they go through is rigorous and that's what the other companies producing carbon wheels are doing as well. Um, and like Bart said, the, the big question always tends to be uh, what depth of a rim should I go with? And some of the other questions I get are, can I ride the carbon wheels all the time? Right. Um, and, and what's the durability going right. to be? Mm -hmm. So from personal experience, um, I've had no problem riding carbon rims all the time. I, this last year I rode on the 3.4 mm -hmm. depth mm -hmm. from Envy for nearly most of the year. I've trained on through the winter, mm -hmm. uh, bad weather, great weather. I have not had to true them. Right. They're bomb proof. Yeah. And and I've had I've got a set of six sevens that I've run for three years now. Mm -hmm. I've rebuilt them twice on onto different hubs with new spokes. The rims are phenomenal. Um, right. And so I think that's what we're seeing with most of the the carbon wheel companies. Um, the depth that you're choosing yeah. is kind of an individual choice. Mm -hmm. There are reasons to go with the really deep guys. There's reasons to go with the not quite so deep. Um, you know, going with a with a set like the three four depth, where you're kind of in that. You know, like Zip has their two o two and three o three, which right. are kind of in that same depth range. Yeah. Uh, they provide you with phenomenal aerodynamics, but from a crosswind perspective, you don't have quite the profile. Right. Um, and so you may not get pushed around as much. And you know, for a lighter weight rider, yeah. that might be a, a big consideration. Like a wind gust 
and there's just not enough weight pushing down yep. onto the road, Bend and you're going to get pushed around. <laughs> you know, like if it's a really windy day on six sevens, you're pr you're going to feel the wind push you. And even though they have engineered them to handle crosswind, yep. Yep. there there's just not enough weight in the equation oh, to keep right. the bike on the ground. Um, and so somebody who is is worried about about getting blown around, yeah. the 3.4 is awesome. Um, or something like a 303 or a 202 right. that's not quite so tall, right. but you're still gonna gain a lot from the aerodynamics. Um, as well, it's gonna be a little bit lighter weight. So right. someone looking to be able to make quick accelerations, mm -hmm. the shorter profiles are gonna do a little bit better job with acceleration, just because there's not as much mass on right. the outside of the circle. That can also turn into an advantage. Yeah. Once you get these guys up to speed, they're going to want to stay at speed. Right. Um, and if you're working with like a cross tailwind, they're going to kind of act like a sail. Right. So they're going to pick up some of that wind advantage. Right. Um, you look at, at the big deep sets like the eight nines from Envy. Um, that can be used as a time trial wheel. A lot of triathletes are using those. Right. Uh, because they're not a closed off disc, right. but through testing they found that those are providing nearly the same benefit as a disc uh, with, um, with, with a little bit more versatility than a disc would give you. Um, so there, there's, a, as you go with the deeper profile, you're seeking out more from an aerodynamic standpoint. Another big factor when you get a deeper profile is the torsional um, strength of the wheel. So the spokes become shorter right. and, and therefore there may not be as mu not as much twist gotcha. when heavy torque is being applied or when you're really railing the corners. Um, you're, you're going to keep that wheel in, a, in a, the same plane. You're not going to get the, the forces twisting it around. Now, that's not to say, like with the 3-4, yeah. I've had nothing but happy riding right. on that wheel, whether I'm descending super fast, whether I'm trying to stop really fast, whether I'm on a very technical criterium course, they, they have been a phenomenal performer. Um, so it really comes down to like some individual preferences. If like you know you're a lightweight rider and you already get pushed around in the wind, you may want to stay away from a deep profile. But if you're looking for just the ultimate in aerodynamic performance and you feel like you, you're not going to get pushed around by it, and again, the designs are, the way that they're designing the wheels is to handle crosswinds with stability. But um, these wheels, the deeper profile that you go with, the more aerodynamics, um, you're just improving that aerodynamic quality and and speed cool all right so hopefully that answers a bunch of your questions on wheels if you have any questions make sure you comment below we'll get you taken care of uh important thing to do is go check out plan seven all the cool stuff they've got going on nutrition training plans all that kind of good stuff and uh go out there keep riding your bike and enjoy it that's the main thing no matter what wheel you're using so have fun and keep cycling strong